crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of the scriptures. After creating the heavens and the earth, God created Adam and Eve. And the first thing that he told them was, don't. Don't what? Adam asked. Don't eat the forbidden fruit, God said. Forbidden fruit? Really? Where is it? Adam and Eve both asked, jumping down, up and down excitedly. It's over there, God said, wondering why he hadn't stopped with creating the elephants. After a few minutes, God saw the kids having an apple break, and he was very angry. Didn't I tell you not to eat the fruit? "Uh Uh-huh, said Adam. Then why did you do it? God asked exasperatedly. I don't know answered Adam. God's punishment was that Adam and Eve should have children of their own, and thus the pattern was set, and it has never changed. That's the best I could come up with for a joke for being children of God, which is Paul's focus in our Galatians passage today. Paul writes to the churches in Galatia to emphasize that God has done all the work to save us. We do not need to do works in order to be saved. After Paul had established these churches and moved on, other Christians, probably Jewish Christians, came arguing that these new Christians needed to live under the Jewish law now that they had accepted this Jew named Jesus as their savior. And that meant that the males had to be circumcised and that they all had to follow Jewish holidays and the Jewish laws, such as dietary restrictions. Paul argues that before Christ, all were subject to the law for salvation. But since Christ Christ came to pay the, the debt for our sins, we have been freed from the law. Paul talks about us being minors when we were subject to the law, but now we have matured into adult heirs. God timed uh, Christ's appearance to, to coincide with our maturing from minors into adult heirs. And that's what Paul's referring to in verse 4 when he writes, When the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son. Paul points out in the first three verses of chapter 4 that as long as we were minors, we were no better off than slaves because as minors, we were controlled by guardians and trustees or trustees. As minors, we do not have the freedom that an adult who comes into an inheritance has. Paul says in verse 3, that while we were slaves, we were enslaved to the elemental spirits of the world. Those elemental spirits of the world included lesser gods, angels, demons, the stars, because people thought that the stars controlled their destiny, and other things. But Paul is thinking in terms of the elemental spirits, including the law. As minors, we, like slaves, were subject to the elemental spirits. We were subject to the law. If we wanted to live in God's house, we had better obey God's law, like a slave had to obey his master. But when we accepted Christ, we became heirs, free from the control of former guardians. We became adopted children. Christ came to free the prisoners to set us free. Fred Craddock 
one of the premier ministers uh, of our denomination who passed away a few years ago. Um, and I had a chance to, to see him speak a few times. Um, I felt very fortunate to do that. But he was also a, a uh, homiletics professor, the teacher that taught the, the ministers how to preach um, at Phillips University um, in Enid uh, for a few years. Anyway, he told the story of vacationing in the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee. He and his wife had found a lovely restaurant at a place called the Black Bear Inn. He wrote, we were seated there looking out at the mountains when this old man with shocking white hair, a Carl Sandburg looking person, came over and spoke to us. He said, you're on vacation? We said yes, and he just kept right on talking. What do you do, he asked. Well, I was thinking, Craddock notes, that it was none of his business, but I let out that I was a minister. Then he said, oh, a minister. Well, I've got a story for you. He pulled up a chair and sat down. Won't you have a seat, Craddock added. He found out later that the man was 80 years old and the former governor of Tennessee. He said, I was born back here in these mountains, and when I was growing up, I attended Laurel Springs Church. My mother was not married, and as you might expect in those days, I was embarrassed about that. At school, I would hide in the weeds by a nearby river and eat my lunch alone because the other children were very cruel. And when I went to town with my courageous mother, I would see the way people looked at me, trying to guess who my daddy was. The preacher fascinated me, but at the same time, he scared me. He had a long beard, a rough hewn face, a deep voice, but I sure liked to hear him preach. But I didn't think I was welcome at church, so I would go just for the sermon. And as soon as the sermon was over, I would rush out so nobody would say, what's a boy like you doing in church? One day though, the old man continued, I was trying to get out, but some people had already gotten into the aisle so I had to remain. I was waiting, getting in a cold sweat, when all of a sudden I felt a hand on my shoulder. And I looked out of the corner of my eye and realized it was the face of the preacher. And I was scared to death. The preacher looked at me. He didn't say a word. He just looked at me. And then he said, well, boy, you're a child of, and he paused. And I knew he was going to try to guess not who my mother was, but who my father was. The preacher said, you're a child of, um, why, you're a child of God. I see a striking resemblance, boy. He swatted me on the bottom and said, Go claim your inheritance. And then the old man was, who was telling the story said to Fred Craddock, I was born on that day. We are all born anew on the day that we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That is the day we become heirs, God's children. That very day, God adopts us and makes us heirs as God's children we must be about our Father's work. Thanks be to God. Why, you're a son of God. I can see the resemblance. Go claim your inheritance. Why, you're a child of God. I can see the resemblance. Go claim your inheritance. Why, you're all children of God. 
I can see the resemblance. Go claim your inheritance. Amen. We are all children of God. There is a striking resemblance. Let us go forth to claim our inheritance and show how we look like God. Amen.